are such an asshole. Okay, this video is sponsored by How Not to Become a Millennial. If you look at the cover, the cover is very clever. It's like pictures of catastrophes and Stalin and the blimp blowing up and the Challenger blowing up and nuclear tornadoes. And then there's a millennial. See him? I'm going to read this chapter again because this is this is like um, this is like you boys buying cars uh, on credit, borrowing money, taking out car loans or leasing a vehicle. I don't know why this doesn't get out there. I understand how my message fails to reach uh, young people about to go off to college <clears throat> uh, because that's that's the dream. Fire heart money will follow. But I've never understood how you guys at 22 then go and sign up for $40,000, $60,000 car loan. And I've never understood why this concept doesn't make it out. So I'm going to read uh, the request. I'm going to read from How Not to Become a Millennial. It's linked down below. Please read it so you have a better life than other people. But let's let's go through this because this, we'll all benefit from this. Hi, Aaron. Just want to start with start this with a thank you for all your work. It's really helped me a ton with understanding life and the way I want to li live it. I've read all of your books, my favorites being The Black Man's Guide Out of Poverty and Reconnaissance Man. I'm a 28-year-old truck driver, no debt aside from my $20,000 SUV, <laughs> single with no kids. I've been driving for the last four years, making 70, 80 grand annually, but I'm honestly tired of it all. I, I'm going to, wait, you read The Black Man's Guide Out of Poverty, right? So I'm going to assume you were a black man and you were in poverty. Right. You you are a black man, right? All right, here's what I want you to do. All right, things might have changed. You never know. Might have changed. I want you to take take your pants, pull them up, look down there. Do you see a black penis? You are not a white girl from the suburbs. I'm sorry, my fine good sir. You are not a white girl from the suburbs. You don't have the luxury of being tired of a job. You don't. And as you're going to find out, it doesn't matter who you are. Even white girls from the suburbs, there is no good job. It doesn't matter that you're tired of it. That's why it's a job. I'll go through the rest of it. We'll get good, but just let's just double check. Check again. Has it changed? Still a black man? Still, still a black cock down there? Okay, good. You, I don't think uh, if you're 28 years old, I don't think I think you're past the stage where you might spontaneously turn into a white girl from the suburbs. All right, I'm glad we've got that settled. Okay. Uh, I love the money, but I feel as though I'm dying of boredom. I want to use my brain again, which is why I've come up with three ideas and wanted your feedback on them. <clears throat> Thanks. The first being is getting another trade. I was thinking of radiology technic technician, x-ray, MRI, CAT, sonogram, and nuclear medicine. Rad techs make 60 to 80K out of school with tons of room for growth for the profession. I'm not too hot on this one, but, but it does provide a good living. All right. That's perfectly legit. Absolutely. If, if you want to start another trade, that's a very good, I think it's a 18 month program, maybe two year program, depending where you are. Absolutely. Very legitimate trade and profession. The second, a passion of mine. Oh, the P word is neuroscience. I specifically want to work with vets who live with PTSD, young men who struggle from PMO, PRON. Wait, PMO, is that an actual medical title, like acronym they assigned it? PMO, what does it stand for? Um, it would require about two and a half more years of school. I have associates in liberal arts, ha ha. I want to make decent money out of the gate doing research or teaching, only 45K, which would mean I'd most likely have to go do grad, which means you're going to go back to poverty. Remember the book you read, The Black Man's Guide Out of Poverty? Remember that book you just read? Remember the poverty you were in? Wait, check, check, cock check. Black cock, still there. All right. Not a white woman yet? Okay. <laughs> Do you want to go back to poverty? Oh, uh, I was planning on using trucking to supplement income until I was more established in the field. Ugh. No. That, look. Neuroscience, that's hard, man. Neurochemistry, neuroscience, neurology. You might as well become a full bore uh, uh, um, uh, medical doctor <clears throat> who specializes in neurology, neuroscience, neurochemistry, neurosurgery. Isn't that what uh, Ben Carson was, a neurosurgeon? And dude, you want to help the vet. Look, I this is not a mockery of the vets. I'm going to help the children. 
I'm going to make the world a better place. I'm going to make a difference. No, you're not. Look, you want to help out vets and PTSD? Go volunteer at like the uh, Wounded Warriors. Go volunteer at the VA. L let me let me show let me explain. <clears throat> How many decades, if not centuries, probably more more decades because neurology relatively recent field has these has the psychology industry made a freaking lick of difference? Has it cured anyone? And you're going to take a huge pay cut and you got to go back for a lot of school and it ain't going to be easy school no more. Right. But here, here's another thing. Let's let's remove psychology, neuroscience, right? Neurochemistry ha has SSRIs or Ritalin or any of these drugs help people or just made their lives worse. You know, you're kind of <clears throat> you're kind of coming to me with the exact same like uh, approach I had when I was a young man who won in economics. My goal was to enrich people to increase the standards of living of population. That's what economics is for. But you don't realize the field in the industry is one, not only um, uh, inept, it's not solving the problem. All the Now there, economics has been around for hundreds of years. Have we got our economic act together? No. All the economists in the world can't get their act together. <clears throat> Things are getting worse. So the field is fra uh, not fraudulent, but... Um, ineffective it's pointless it's useless same thing with psychology things have gotten worse and then also it's fraudulent you want to make money as an economist you find a way to reverse engineer and rationalize why the government needs more money and socialism is a good thing in psychology or neuroscience neurochemistry it's how to sell more drugs don't solve the problem don't make it you're not you're not good it's it's an untenable situation your goal of wanting to help out the vets will not be achieved because the subject is flawed and the field is flawed. You're not flawed. You're fine. <clears throat> I mean, you would go in there with the best of intentions, but you're not, you're not, if they haven't made a lick of difference now, literally the millions of people before you and whatever, the trillions, we got to be up to trillions now spent on this. No, you want to help out the vets, help them out with volunteer work. That's fine. Right. But you're not, you're not going into that field or profession. The third is more of a throwaway idea, but it seems fun as hell. Oh, that worked for the millennials, didn't it? I want to take 15 to 10 to 15 and just travel the world. Well, that's fine. That's not a, you're not giving up your job. Of course you can. But I'd, I'd almost encourage you to, you have to do global reconnaissance. I know it seems like a waste of resources, but I believe it'd be fun experience in the world and various cultures may find something to do in life as well. I'm, I'm all for that. You've earned your money. That is enjoyable. Um, I don't think that's a career or profession, but I would absolutely recommend that. That's one of the main things I recommend in the menu. Uh, ba -ba -ba, world experience, various cultures, maybe find something new to do in life as well. I'm a minimal minimalist, so I naturally don't spend much. <clears throat> I, I don't see how that is a mutually exclusive choice. You should do that anyway, whether or not you continue as a truck driver or not. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to read this again. Oh, you're going to read it again? You're going to read it again. Page 254. $65,000 a year to file and scan documents. <clears throat> to be perfectly honest, I did not understand the true nature of a career until I was well into my 30s. Still idealistic, thinking I was a white girl. Nope, just white. Uh, still idealistic, I thought my career should challenge my intellect while also perpetually sharpening my skills to make me the most valuable employee possible. I also became incredibly proficient at using whatever technology was available to streamline my job. So proficient, in fact, I could do the work of four people in about half the time. This was great because I was able to land the role as a senior analyst, though the title was a bit of a misnomer because there were no analysts beneath me. But I was the sole analyst for an entire company as I could easily handle all the credit applications, underwriting them thoroughly, but also in record time. There was just one tiny problem. I was still too efficient. <clears throat> and so every day around noon, I would run out of, work, uh, out of work and then twiddle my thumbs for the remaining four hours of the day. My dental health improved markedly as I would brush my teeth two to three times a day. My cardiovascular health also improved as I would walk around the campus to get some exercise. And I was very much on top of my finances, often paying bills early just to have something to do. Just sitting and killing four hours a day, <clears throat> waiting for applications to come in. Inevitably, I couldn't handle acting like I was working four hours every day and asked my boss if they if he had any other work. 
And sure enough, he did. He had a ton of filing, faxing, and scanning that needed to be done and nobody to do it. Out of sheer boredom, I accepted the offer. But over the next month of doing what was nothing more than clerical work, I realized something. Whether I was programming a model, doing some complex cash flow analysis, brushing my teeth or filing papers, it didn't matter. I was never going to get back those eight hours per day, and I was still going to get paid $65,000 a year. This epiphany was important because I finally and truly identified a career for what it was. It was not to get promoted with some new fancy title. It was not to learn new skills while honing my current ones. It wasn't to hobnob at networking events to make the right connections. It was prostitution. <clears throat> it was just me whoring out precious little bits of my finite life in exchange for some money. And whether it was scanning documents or crunching statistics or flossing my teeth, I was still giving up that exact same hour of my finite life in exchange for that exact same $32.50. Every hour, every time, every day. The nature and purpose of a job, a career, a profession is to make as much money for the finite bits of your life you are giving up so that you can then go and live life. A job, a career, a profession <clears throat> is a tool that enables you to actually live your life. And your third option. Is not a career option. That is living life. That is a separate category. You can be an x-ray tech. You can be a truck driver. If you want to put in the effort to become an actual neurologist and, and make the money after a lot of labor, <clears throat> that's fine. But keep in mind, no matter which one of those three you choose, the whole point of it is to make money so that you can go and travel the world or fish or um, <clears throat> read books or whatever it is that, that you want to do. Start a family. That is life. Modern day girls who just swallowed the feminist whole, a feminism whole, have it reversed. They think their job and working is their life. That is not it. The job is merely a tool to enable you to enjoy and live a good and happy life before you die. And you are making the classical millennial mistake that the teachers and the guidance counselors and the parents and the television, the media and the Democrats told my generation, the millennials, I think you're a Zoomer now, you're a younger man, <clears throat> is that it is follow your heart and the money will follow, that your career is the most important thing that you do. That and and of course it's idealistic. I could tell that you 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 drank some of the millennial Kool-Aid where you're like, I want to help out the vets. No. Yep. Help out the vets. How about the poor? Do it on your own free time. All right. That is not going to get you the money you need as quickly as possible to go and live. And if you're looking for point and purpose and reason in life, it is not going to be through your career. It's going to be through living life. <clears throat> and here's the main reason. Ultimately, even if you were, let's say you were to do the thing that, that you have uh, a passion for, which I hate that word. You go get your PhD. You go become a neuroscience. You know what? You know what? You're going to get bored of that too. There is no job that isn't boring. It's not because of the nature of the job or anything. Else. It's because of repetition. Everything has a shelf life. Everything has a finite amount of novelty that inevitably wears out. And if you want proof, go look up my buddy Sterling Cooper. <clears throat> he is a porn star. We were doing a seminar for Donovan Sharp. He was in the audience. I, yell, I say, hey, Coop, are you sick and tired of having sex sometimes? Like, this, Keep in mind now. You're a man. Are you still a guy? Take a look. All right. Black cock check. All right. I'm, I'm not, it's not black, but it's white. You still got your black cock? All right. <clears throat> I'm going to assume you like women and you're okay with sleeping with women, beautiful ones. Would you be, uh, would you be uh, amenable? Is that the word? Would you be agreeable? to having sex with beautiful women at the same time? Well, that's Sterling Cooper's job. And you know what? You know what? As fun and as exciting as that sounds, and it would be for the first several moments and a couple times, guess what? He's sick of it. There's days he don't want to go to work. Now, some days I'm sure he's happy to go to work, but there's days he doesn't want to go to work. And that's the thing. That's what they don't tell you youngins, is it doesn't matter what you do. 
it could be <clears throat> making ice cream. It could be doing accounting. It could be doing taxes. It could be doing brain surgery. It could be helping with the vets. It could be driving truck. It all gets boring in the end because of the volume of work. I mean, I got a pretty sweet gig here, right? We admit this is not a real job. We admit this is kind of fun. It's stupid and funny. I mean, we do some real work here. We get we help people out. <clears throat> but this is not me pouring over financial statements working in banking, right? This isn't me filing and scanning either. You know what? I get bored doing the videos, man. I mean, it's not as bad, not as bad as filling out yet another spreadsheet. I, I grant you that. But there's days like, God dang it, I don't want to do it. I got other stuff that I'd rather do. Doesn't matter. People pay it. I got to play. That, that is the job. And so I'm not, I'm not against you exploring these other options and for an intellectual endeavor pursuing maybe neuroscience on the side. But if you're using that to replace and find a job that's going to give you purpose and meaning, no job gives you purpose and meaning. It all runs out of novelty. It all becomes boring <clears throat> and it all becomes on. And then it simply becomes a transaction of your time for money, which makes you, me and every red blooded American black cock check and some black cocks, some not black cocks, some not even cocks at all. Red blooded Americans, hooers. we're all hooers. And if you really want to make a difference in the world, you got to make sure you got your money, your food, your clothing, and shelter taken care of. And then you go with it. Because here's, here's another <clears throat> inefficiency. I'll, I'll give you a perfect example of why, especially millennials and Zoomers, like, I'm going to change the world. Why that's not efficient. So many people have gone and want to change the world as a profession. Academia has built it around and made it that you got to get a bachelor's or a master's degree to go get professionally paid in these fields. So there's this huge hurdle in time and money costs in order to go and professionally pursue these professions to change lives and make a difference. Whereas if you just volunteer, you're doing the exact same thing. Like, let's say you want to be a teacher, all right? Think about this. <clears throat> you have to go to school. Well, some, it depends on the state. You, can, you don't have to go to school for education, but you do need to get a license. But some people actually go to school for four years, sometimes more, to get a degree in education because they couldn't pick up how teaching worked in the first 13 years of their educational experience. They got to go four more years to learn how to teach. They didn't pay attention to their teachers for like almost 20 years. Then you got to get a license. Then they go teach it. Change lives. Save the planet. <laughs> and they hate their students. They hate their jobs. They hate their lives. They bitch and whine about not getting paid enough money. They still got summers off. You ever actually see a happy teacher? Do they actually change lives? Do they actually make a difference? No. They're the ones telling you, do what you like and the money will follow. They've changed the world. Make it. They don't make a difference. They don't change lives, not for the better anyway. They convince these poor kids they, they're they not straight when they are straight or maybe vice versa. <clears throat> Whereas if you want to help out kids, you know how you really help out kids? Big brothers, little sisters. Um, volunteer at the orphanage. Uh, if you're religious, you're in the church or mosque or whatever, there's got to be some little you know, Sunday school or something like that. Um. You got a younger brother, baby, kid, sister. You got nephews or nieces. Hey, they, they need an uncle to kind of give them the straight dope every once in a while because Lord knows what the parents are teaching them. Eh, free range children. You want to help vets? Volunteer at any veteran service, the VA or whatever. And you're going to, you're probably going to help them out more because you're not hamstrung by all the professional bureaucratic red tape requirements that comes along with public education, social work, all these government programs. You get to walk in there, like be a substitute teacher. It's easy. You're going, hey, how you doing? Don't care about their education though, by the way. Just, you know, come in and try and teach the kids one or two things. <clears throat> you change your lives just as much as the, the professional teachers are. But to enter a field where you're going to make a difference? No. No, you're not going to make a difference. You're not going to feel good. You're going to be sick of that crap. So it's all futile anyway. You go to where you are paid lots of money. You accept 
all jobs become boring after a while, including truck driving, and that's okay. If if you're bored truck driving, tune into some podcasts. But don't think for don't for a second. Maybe this is what it is. <clears throat> the lie, and it's a lie. The lie that there is some job out there that is going to be hot, compens- well compensated and rewarding and actually stimulated, rewarding. No, might be at first, but everything inevitably turns into another job because of the shelf life of novelty. And so don't ruin your life and jump from this career to that profession to end up in the exact same position you are now. You're making 70 to 80 grand a year. You ain't even 25 yet, dude. You're killing it. Your goal should not be to, what should I do for a living? Keep driving truck is what you should do for a living. And stop torturing yourself thinking there's something better out there. And then when you get home and you take two or three weeks off, absolutely go travel. Go ride a motorcycle. Go pick up archery. Go pick up salsa. Whatever it is you want. That's your life. And if you feel you got to do something charitable or contributing to society, I would go through the traditional forms of community service, you know, uh, volunteer at the Rotary Club, um, <clears throat> maybe teach at the, at the truck driving school, uh, something. But for God's sake, don't become a profession in it. Don't ever become a professional helper of people, changer of lives. And you know, here's, here's, you want to wear this? Go look up Jessica Asaf, A-S-S-A-F. You go look up her career and profession. Or I guess David Hogg or uh, the Down Syndrome kid from Sweden that, t- how dare you, that girl. Go look where they be, go look at where they end up. They don't change lives. All they do, professional whiners and complainers and at best become social media people and make money that way. But then it's just you're kind of a quasi celebrity. So please, I mean, you can do whatever you want. But I would, man, you you nailed it. You just nailed it. <laughs> you're making more than engineers coming out of college right now for a fraction of the schooling. You you must do it well. You keep doing it. All you gotta do is chill and listen to podcasts. Save your money. Don't get no girls pregnant. You're a minimalist. Just, you know, drive around, travel the world, find a place you might want to live, buy a piece of land, keep driving truck for a while, and then just sit and chill. You're golden. Don't mess this up, man. Black cock check, everyone. All right, everyone's no one turned into a white woman yet. So there you go. All right. <clears throat> so link below is how not to become a millennial. It's too late for the millennial generation. I mean, if you're a millennial, you could read that book and see how to salvage the last half of your life. But for you, Zoomers and alphas, whatever's coming up, man, just don't fall for the same lies the lies the millennials did. All right. You, you can have a better, and that's one of the big ones. That's one of the big ones that your career or job has to like, ooh, save the planet, change lives, save the whales, help the children. No. Do you see how bad everyone else, you, you know, it's like we're on like the fourth or fifth generation now. People are like going to save the world. How's the world turning out right now? You think they have a freaking clue what they're doing? How about, here's a new idea, individualism. If every individual takes care of themselves, you'll be okay. <clears throat> All right, let's go to the Super Chats if there are any. Oh, I'm on with Chad Elkums. In uh, all 213 of you, subscribe here, and then I'll be on with Chad in about an hour. I'm going to go try to play some video games. Uh, the Elkins Accounting Hour. Help. <laughs> no, I do. Every paycheck. What do you, people say, you, should, you make a great dad. I'm like, I'm supporting a ton of kids right now. What do you see? The property taxes I pay? What do you? I did help the minorities. I helped the minorities more than any Democrat ever did. And more than more than the entire welfare state ever helped minorities. I wrote the Black Man's Guide Out of Poverty and Black Man and the uh, Batch of Pad Economics and Worthless. And it helped a ton of, of young black Hispanic men, predominantly, some women tuned into it too, to avoid poverty. I've done more than the entire welfare state because the welfare state hasn't gotten one single minority out of poverty. Just kept them in it. Not a high hurdle to beat. <clears throat> What's more effective, 50 trillion of welfare spending or Aaron Clary's book? Aaron Clary's book. 
Is it that good? No, it's just, it's just pissed away 50 trillion. Oh, it's my alarm. I got a podcast with Vlad Elkums. Who's that guy? Ask Bucket 62, uh, two bucks. The passion word equals break out that vibe. Oh, you're right. Oh, oh, hang on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got to be on my game more. It's right there. It's right there. When I hear passion, I got to break that out. Darn it. <clears throat> no Zoners Podcast, a.k.a. Coach JR. Five Canadian bucks. Hey, Cappy, how can I get away with addressing a feminist judge I have to work with? She is 100% as woman bias in court. How can I get away with addressing a feminist? What do you mean get away with addressing? Well, okay, she's a she's a feminist and she's a judge. So I'm going to assume she's at least 35 and she has a bias in the court. You're not going to convince her. That's her religion, dude. You're not going to convince her. Uh, I mean, yeah, give me context what you're trying to do. You address her, you address her as your honor, right? Or in Canada, whatever, your honor, eh? Whatever you, you call them up there. I don't know. Uh, but what do you mean address? You, you look... <laughs> You gonna you gonna get a feminist? Have 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 any of you converted a feminist? Have any of you ever known to do that? Has that happened? The 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 best thing and the worst thing you could do for them is encourage them. Absolutely, you're right. Absolutely right. Get her a box of wine every Christmas. I don't know. Why would you fight it? What's the worst thing to do to a to a socialist? Let them keep thinking that socialism is great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You... <clears throat> Wiz Division Productions, five bucks millennial. I'm tired of this, Grandpa Cappy. That's too damn bad. You keep digging. Quote from a 2003 film, Holes. Bupkis to your passions. What? Uh, holes. Is that used lions or something? Glenn Lawrence. Oh, Glenn Lawrence, our resident model and podcaster agent in the field. Uh, five bucks. Hey, Cappy, want to say hello, my goodness. Thanks, Glenn. How things? You good? You've been gone for where you been? You've been having fun working? Everyone, please subscribe to Glenn's channel. Shy drummer kilt, five Canadian bucks. Millennial at my job. You can't become rich with a 40 hour work week today. They want everything without work. Well, generally he's right though. You can't become rich. I mean, you could become well off if you're a minimalist, but I doubt I doubt this millennial is is a student of, of minimalism. <clears throat> um, you you could become well off. Rich, probably not. No, it takes more than forty hours a week to become rich. He's kind of right on that. The more the the more they're afraid of work, the worse they're going to be. They don't realize that work is the solution. Smart work. You can't just work hard. I mean, even then, you could work hard and not not piss away your money. You'll be fine. Dave, 128, two bucks. Happy teacher goes unicorn like the debtless female. <laughs> I saw very few happy teachers. There, there were a couple. Out of the 89 teachers I had, three were, were good teachers who cared. And they generally were the happy ones, or at least content. <clears throat> hmm. ba -ba -da -ba. That's it. There you go. All right. Link down below. How not to become a millennial. I'm not kidding, guys. This will save your life. Please read this book. I know it's a thick book. And, but, man, if you had every high school kid read this, well, one, it would immediately get banned because uh, it immediately undermines all the evil teachers are trying to do. Uh, but I don't know. Do you want to be poor like the millennials? Do you want to? Eh, I'm 42. I need a bailout. All right. See you guys later. Toodles.